the leader enterprise of um, it's Montpelier Pioneer, Ohio. Yes. Is that Northwest Ohio? Yeah, that's, that uh, yeah, that's Northwest. That's the home of the Etch a Sketch. Home of the Etch. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. The home of the Etch a Sketch. Yeah. Those things are still, you know, that, those are marvelous. Yeah. Uh, Shuttle Man lands home for Bean Days. I mean, that, that's that's of all the other things going home for because Bean Days is a big deal. In, in your old hometown, right? It, it is. In fact, as a kid, um, you know, we'd go downtown, and, and it was more for uh, the marketplace, and they'd bring all their wares out, shoes and all that stuff, but then they would have a parade. And uh, so as a kid growing up, uh, that was always a big deal for us. But I uh, had an opportunity this time to actually be on the other side. We were actually in the parade. and uh, The Bean Day Parade? Bean Day Parade, and believe it or not, we were in a uh, red car a convertible, and the boys were with us. And um, so uh, that was the first time they'd ever even uh, been really to a big parade like that. And you so know, they were in it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting here because you go, you, you've had an opportunity to tell your story about being part of the space program. Yep. And, and, you know, you weigh this because you were also at the, uh, the Astronaut Hall of Fame uh, inductee ceremony, I guess, in this year, which was yep. back in. Because I remember you, um, you kept sending us stuff. And right. I, when yep. was that? Yeah, that was back in uh, June time. Back in June. Yeah. So you've got so you got home and this and and the and the induction for the astronaut Hall of Fame. I mean, right. these are which is the bigger one to you? Well, you know the thing is, uh, they're all big to us because we're uh, trying to get the word out, and of course the boys are traveling with us, and uh, they're loving it. And the fact this has got to be a life if you're a kid and you because your boys are how old? Yeah, well they're uh, fourteen, fifteen. So now. you're perfect yeah. age to because that, that's yeah. when I was absorbing yeah. all this stuff because we yeah. moved. I was about yeah. that age when we moved from Montana to Georgia, and I remember every landmark. Yeah. I remember yeah. going through Bill Wyoming, population yeah. seven. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> still sticks in my mind. Ah, so you your boys are going to remember all this, well, you th- know, this experience and all these places they went with their parents well, to promote the book. You know, that's right. And, and the thing is, the beauty of it is they're in the book. And uh, the fact that we get to speak uh, to people about uh, our journey with them. And, uh, you know, it really uh, is something that's very special for Diane and I. The book is called Remove Before Flight, right. and uh, Michael Griffin writes a nice thing about the story, and, and that's yeah. on the posters that, that, that you take to the book signings. Right. Uh, he's also, I think, on the, it's on the back yeah, cover, he did, too. Yeah, he actually did the forward. Or it's on the, the, yeah, it's actually on the cover of the book. Um, this story is special because it, it really recognizes, you know, we hear a lot about Von Braun, and we hear a lot about the leadership, we hear a lot about the astronauts, but we don't hear about all the thousands of people who made this happen and all the near misses of things that could have gone wrong without these thousands of people, that's right. right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. In fact, um, our journey uh, for 33 years in the shuttle program uh, was so fantastic, and the legacy is so much larger than whatever I really did in the program. And uh, having this book to be able to inspire the next generation. I, as Diane and I were driving in, of course, we were hearing your political things and what's going on in politics, and we won't touch on that. You heard but, my rant on millennials. Well, yeah, but, you time. know, here's the thing. Here's, here's what we're trying to do with the millenniums. And, and, of course, we have two boys that we're trying to, you know, we're baby boomers, and we're trying to raise these two young men, uh, really, and and uh, we're trying to inspire the next generation. Because we have to. We have to. we got to hand it off to and, somebody. And, you know, the leadership element is the fact that we are going to be the ones to pay the national debt off. We're the ones that are going to spill the blood for our liberties. So we need to find leaders that are, of course, knowledgeable for one, but they need to be inspirational. We're going to do the work. So we need somebody to lead us to do that work. And so that when we go to vote, we need to pick that person that is inspirational to us and certainly knowledgeable also. But uh, inspiration is very important. Walk, all right, give us the mental picture here of you guys. The last time we talked to you, you were heading on the road to go yeah. do the book tour. Right. Tell us where you've been and some of the things that surprised you. Because you went to places that were very much space oriented. Right. And then you went to places that kind of went, huh? Yeah. Well, <laughs> but but yeah. you, we, there were some surprises along the way. Yeah. You know, uh, we put uh, 6,000 miles on the van since the last time we've been here. And uh, of course, that included uh, trips to Florida. 
and uh, of course that's pro space and we were really accepted really down there really in a, in a great way i want to talk about that one in okay. particular and then okay. i want to maybe touch on some places where right. you went and, oh, and, yeah. and maybe left people going wow we need to keep doing this oh yeah, sure <laughs> yeah you probably won some people over so yeah, um absolutely. she's being quiet because <laughs> well, she, we'll, we'll let her <laughs> get a get, word in edgewise here there you go. um scott shuttleman phillips uh with diane phillips who also uh is is also or, her name's on the cover, cover of the book. Right. We did this together. The love of my um, life. They're with us for the hour. Stick around. All right. That just makes the hair stand up on well, your arm. Well, I'm telling you what, I, Scotty, <laughs> thanks for doing that. Hey, you know, um, Diane and I and the boys were there for the last launch, and uh, we were right there. Funny story. Funny story. We were down at the Kennedy Space Center for the Astronaut Hall of Fame, and we had an escort. Security had taken us over on site. We didn't have a pass to get on, so security took us in, but they could not give us a ride back. So we had to fend for ourselves on the buses. There were six buses, and so we had our, of course, Space Shuttle Tribute and some models and stuff, and, and of course, we were wheeling it down. The first bus said, we can't take you. Second bus, we can't take you. Third bus, can't take you. Fourth bus, no go. Fifth bus, no space. The final bus, Diane and I got on, loaded everything up, walked all the way to the rear, sat down, the bus took off, the lights came on, and the last shuttle commander, Chris Ferguson, set, was sitting in front of us. Wow. And I tapped on his shoulder and said, Chris, I said, you're the last commander, and I left after you. And what an appropriate time. To be on the last bus. It was, <laughs> we were on the last bus, on the last seat. Wow. So Diane said, you're not, I can't believe this. And uh, so uh, it was very kind, and, and uh, so it was sort of a, it was it was meant to happen, so it was very special. It's it amazing when those special things happen. Yeah, but you know, your book, by the way, Scott Shuttleman Phillips, uh, "Removed Before Flight," is the book. It's a memoir of um, a space shuttle team member. Yeah. You you got to when when you go to non space towns, you're you're kind of in education mode. You're saying, look, this is what we did. This is what why it means something. Yeah. But when you go to places like when you were down in Florida around the Cape, and you, do you have guys coming up, guys and gals coming up to get saying, hey, thanks for telling our story. Yeah, I mean, because it, because you're th- we're talking thousands of people. Absolutely. Here. In fact, uh, we're being really uh, excited uh, to uh, go to the Marshall Corps Space Flight Center for a signing. A lot of my coworkers came up. In fact, uh, some co-workers that didn't even really like me <laughs> during the time that we had to do some stuff, he actually came up on yeah, we've, we've revised uh, our got opinion. Got it, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> got photo ops and everything. But they were proud to the fact that, I, uh, that Diane and I were able to capture the story. Uh, a lot of guys now are getting ready to, you know, some guys that hung on, you know, because they were afraid to leave or whatever, uh, have come to me and said, you know, what's it like on the other side? Uh, in retirement, I said, it, it's been fantastic. Diane and I took a chance of writing this book. It took us three and a half years. And of course, without Diane, uh, would have never come out of my head. So uh, I'm very grateful to you, honey, for uh, putting this thing together for us. And uh, we're writing the legacy. The legacy is much bigger than whatever I accomplished in the shuttle program. Uh, The interesting thing, what I'm finding out is astronauts are very special people, but I'm gonna be honest, astronauts uh, are not as inspirational is some of the people that actually put this thing together. A lot of the inspiration comes from the fact that they had the ride, and so they're able to talk about their experience in the ride. Most of them are engineer types. Most of them are just very straight-laced people, and they're not that inspirational in a case that, uh, you know, we assume that they are, but it's the people that put it together is where the inspiration comes from, and uh, the designers and the creators and the, and the actual technicians. So... Uh, the astronauts are the greatest thing. They put their lives on the line. But here again, the astronauts are actually just selling the fact that they rode this uh, fantastic vehicle. Let's let's talk about the rest of the journey here. You yep. said you put 6,000 miles in the yeah. vehicle. <laughs> so, yeah, so, without two oil changes there. Yeah. So, so you look, oh, you're getting in trouble here. Yeah. My mechanic would be admonishing yeah. you. Oh, yeah. The, um, the, the trip. 
and, and Diane, t- chime in here because I'm sure you guys went to some towns where they were, you know, space program? What? We, we, why should we be doing this? Did you guys win some people over with this? I mean, to places, some of the places you went to do these signings, people came up that you didn't expect? I was blown away. Yeah, you know, the next generation in particular with the movies coming out, you know, The Martian is coming out in October. I believe it's October, and it's going to hit the, the big. Young people are looking for something to attach themselves to, something larger than themselves. Our society now is looking inward, and it's very sad because now it's about them. And we all know, we were all brought up to believe that helping other people is better than receiving. And, of course, that's even biblical. And the fact that when you reach out and attach yourself to something larger than yourself, you know, you're going to do things that you've never done. Be, you've never done before, and it stretches the human mind. Is there a particular town that jumps out at you? Well, as yeah, one of those places well, that know, kind of shocked you. Well, you know, we went up to Michigan to see Diane's uh, parents and mother. Actually, her dad's gone now, but uh, her mom and and uh, talking with the older people there. Um, they saw the old America. They saw the greatness of America. So even older people in their 80s and 90s uh, were all enthusiastic about it. So. Yeah. All right, we're going to get to some more of this, and uh, we'll hear from Diane here in a minute. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're, we're, we, we, better. we better. We better. Uh, Scott Shettleman Phillips' uh, memoir of a, um, of a space shuttle team member, telling a lot of people's story here in Removal Before Flight. More on their journey just ahead. When I first met this gentleman, I, I, he was known. I mean, I first met you when you were doing these incredible carvings of the um, uh, of the shuttle and the tank and the the boosters, and 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 I started seeing these things everywhere. And we first yep. first met talking about right. that. Yeah. And you wrote this book, yep. which is kind of every. I, I guess you would call it every man's book for the space program. A little inspiration, a little of how you got here. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I did it. You can do it, too, because you say you want to be inspi- inspirational. Yep. The other thing I like about this is, is is it's also one of those books you want to keep around because you go, well, I wonder how big the shuttle was. I wonder how big the tank was. Yep. You put in the back, in the appendix, you got all the, the stats yep. that you would want as a technical person, yep. right? Yeah, in fact, a guy came up to me at church yes, uh, Sunday and said, hey, I, I got your book from Amazon. And, and I said, man, he said, I can't believe how big that thing was. And uh, I said, well, it had 528,616 gallons of fuel, 154 feet long, 28 feet in diameter. It was a fantastic adventure. And, um, yeah, uh, to be able to write this book, to tell uh, the Huntsville story, the North Alabama story, I did very, you know, little in the sense of, of bigness of the, of the brain power behind it. But I had a vision that this was a legacy thing and and uh, spending 33 years on it uh, was a fantastic adventure you guys i'm gonna bring diane in here because i want to ask yeah. this question you, you guys you homeschool the boys so it's real easy to take them on the road and be part of this whole adventure and they have assignments and everything mm-hmm. uh one's the photographer the other one's kind of logistics <laughs> yeah just like his old man um, <laughs> but as, as you guys go on the six thousand mile journey you've go you've gone th- you go through all these towns did you get any of the hunts what <laughs> i mean were there people who i mean do people appreciated did, were there any 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 people that didn't get it, or or even to these towns where you you went, where you thought, well, nobody's going to care about the space the program, and the and you go to a book signing, and here these people are. I mean, did you did you encounter any of that at all, or are people pretty savvy? Well, you know, the thing is, the artwork that we're taking along with us really inspires people because it gets their attention. They mm-hmm. forget that we even have a book. They'll talk to us. And we'll talk to them and they see our boys and that we're talking family stuff. And they said, oh, and you got a book? It's like, yeah. So, Diane, so what was an, the most inspiring the book is part, an of, the, part yeah. of the trip to you? You know, just I, I think that the, tra- the travels and meeting people all over the country. I love I love to travel anyway. And our boys now have a love for travel. Um, it is such a blessing to be able to homeschool. It was something that we always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. But it just it, it fit in so beautifully a couple of years ago while we were writing the book. And we thought, you know, if we uh, could travel with the book, if it if it 
you know, ended up that we were able to do that to homeschool. Um, and they're loving homeschool. Um, yeah. And um, they have some classes with a co-op, but most of it's on the computer. So we take our laptops and we travel. Just take everything with you. With Yes. And they're getting an education that they would never get in a traditional school. So what's been your favorite spot along the tr- the whole trip for you? Anything in particular stand out? I don't know. I love Kennedy Space Center. Love it. It, it. It's just so inspiring, and, and it's, it's just fun, and, and to see the history. I love the history, and um, they're so different, like you said, Kennedy Space Center, but then to go home to Scott's, you know, Scott's hometown and, and meet the people that he grew up with, um, it, I, I love that. I love that. You know, you wonder, can you really go home? Yeah, yeah. You can. We went home. We went home, and it was fantastic. In the in the parade, the parade, there were 105 vehicles in that parade. And uh, halfway through, it was kind of funny. It, it it was sort of threatening weather that day, and we were in a convertible. And half, we were about halfway through the parade, and it started sprinkling. We thought, okay, we can we can deal with that. It's okay. It's a, all of a sudden, it opened up. It poured <laughs> and we, the boys started laughing and they thought that was the best they had a good if you time. ask them that would be yeah. their best experience. i got up on the back i got up on the back and started and it was I'm on the toad strangler in a convertible uh, we'll yeah. never experience that again yeah, oh, no. yeah. it was a in fact a good fam, family memory we're and we're building family memories yeah, and, and it's all about yeah. making memories it's all about it's, making it's about memories time point, it's yeah. about time and yeah. you can't get that time back yeah. and we are having a blast we are having a blast yeah. Along the way, Kentucky was another one of those places you guys visited. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To tell us about some of the other states and some of the other experiences and kind of the flavor of the reception you got at a lot of these places you stopped. Yeah, well, here again, it's, it's uh, going up uh, to Ohio, going up to Michigan. You're going to Kennedy Space Center down in Florida. We've done that several times in Florida. And, of course, Alabama, obviously, and, and uh, Tennessee and, and some of the. So, you know, we're staying kind of south uh, in the southeast area right now uh we'll be heading up to goddard space flight center uh this uh spring and we're going to go to nasa headquarters and uh, so we're slated to go to cf martin guitar company which will be up in pennsylvania and then we're going to go to martha's vineyard i don't we just do that. My sister lives there, so she's going to do so it. So you're making this kind of a family thing well, along yeah, the way. Yeah, it's a family thing. In, in fact, uh, Christian Andrew, uh, you know, he's not listening, but he's going to be staying up there for a while, too, to have some fun. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're finding very positive people because, here again, we're traveling with the artwork. I'm taking the space shuttle uh, uh, tribute, uh, which no one's ever seen, you know, around the country, and, and um, getting people, of course, to, uh, to sign it and uh, – uh, they're inspired by the artwork, and uh, so that an afterthought. The book is like, oh, you got a book too. It's like, yeah. And, so it's so, kind of a, it, it's almost a traveling road show it, for well, the space it program. <laughs> it, well, it is. It is. In fact, uh, absolutely. Um, it is uh, inspiring that next generation to attach themselves to something larger than themselves. Uh, we want to be able to prepare, you know, for our future. You know, so we're trying to tell children and young people to prepare, be um, prepared, do your schoolwork, do the right thing by people being honest and build a good work ethic. And, uh, you know, the future will belong to you. Were you the one that shared this figure with me or did I get it from somebody else? The, the total number of people involved in the shuttle program and the number of contractors and everything. Yeah. Was that you? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it fluctuated, you know, through the years, but roughly 20, 25,000 people, you know, including the vendors, you know, the Michoud, uh people that built the external tank. We had at one time almost 4,800 people, 4,800 people building that external tank. Now, of course, after uh, Challenger, it, it went down. Uh, half about 2,500. So we, uh, you know, built the external tank with about 25 to 2,800 people, uh, and then plus the engines and, and, of course, all the boosters and and all the the, the the other manufacturers and things of that nature. So well over 20, 25,000 people had uh, gone through that program uh, at any given time, and uh, so uh, of course I was just one of that many. But um, what uh, you're telling, but, but, but what you're doing is, in in many ways, even though there's a lot of personal stuff in there, you're telling a lot of you're telling their story too. I, absolutely, you know, the fact is that the external tank, I uh, was on the test program of it. And of course, my claim to fame, obviously, it was being the last technician out of the first external tank. Hence, the book "Removed Before Flight." I removed the tag. So I even then at 22, I was 22 years old at the time when I did. I knew I was in a sense of something larger than myself. 
And I, of course, kept that ribbon and never really realized I would write a book. But the experience I had with Challenger, of course, obviously Columbia and some of the other elements that uh, happened to me along the way made for such a fantastic adventure. It took Diane to pop that out of my head and to get it on paper and in this book. And, of course, I had, I'm a historian by nature, my hobby, uh, not only woodcrafting, but uh, keeping track of photographs. And, and I documented everything along the way. I even have my first pace check stub. Oh, I wow. Kept that. And it has an external tank etched on it. And it uh, was a low amount, but I was working seven days a week, 12-hour days for two years. I never came up for air. We worked seven days a week where I got time and a is half. That, to, is that the part people don't appreciate is how hard everybody oh, Because it wasn't, it was, I mean, there were thousands of people well, doing the same thing. Yeah. In fact, in in the front of the book, the prologue of the book shows a, a story called Mud Man. And uh, it was a, a story that grabs people. In fact, people tell me, thanks for putting that in there because uh, they didn't understand uh, the gravity of the situation and what we were doing. Uh, and looking back, I wouldn't have done today what i did back then it was very risky but it was all worth it uh, it was all worth it so mud man is the uh, prologue and it does tell the uh, the danger of the uh, shuttle program by the way uh people can get the book a number of ways tell them how to do that we'll, yeah. we have a couple more segments coming up but we haven't mentioned where yeah. to get the book yeah in fact uh just go to uh remove before flight book dot com that's www dot remove before book dot com or you can uh get it on amazon or right. any bookstore at this point we're right. trying to get them all in bookstores. and he may be coming to a bookstore near you as well yeah we're with, in fact uh, here in town yeah scott shuttleman phillips and his wife diane more about their journey where they're going we've talked a little bit about that and more about uh some people who've asked some interesting questions coming up Remove Before Flight is the name of the book. It's uh, Scott Shuttleman Phillips' memoir of a space shuttle team member with uh, wife Diane Phillips. You're, you've contributed a lot to this. Oh, Kept yeah. him on track, right? Oh, yeah. Kept me out of yeah. trouble. <laughs> yeah. You know when, when, when you're touring, you've been touring the country, you put 6,000 miles on the van. Um, what do people ask most about them? I mean, the things that are pretty consistent about what, what do people ask about most when they when they see because they see the model and they go, oh, you have a book. And then they see the shuttle, of course, on the front. What what, what are the questions you get? Yeah. Whenever, um, you know, I go through, uh, you know, a Q&A, uh, usually there's more questions about, um, unfortunately, about uh, the Challenger disaster. A lot of people remember where they were at during that time and uh, the press really uh kind of lost after the fact that you know the seven astronauts that you know that perished but they didn't really follow up uh with the uh the actual workers and um the story is that uh you know nasa before challenger was getting ready to sign the largest contract they had ever signed to date over a billion dollars to uh purchase external tanks which would give us uh, roughly 24 flights a year the promise wow. was uh, two tanks a month, which we had re- what we call rate tooling, and those we were geared up with four thousand eight hundred people, almost five thousand people to build this. Well, I was up in the contracting officer's uh, uh, office the day that they wrote that uh, contract up, and we were all excited that we were going to sign it. And uh, it turned out that the Challenger accident happened. They laid off half of those people, mm-hmm. and so half of those four thousand eight hundred people went home. And uh, their dreams came to an end. But I, you know, was part of the uh, reflight, so I stayed on, obviously. Uh, and um, so, but people were curious about, uh, you know, uh, what the Challenger disaster meant. But for we us. as a country, I think, forgot, I guess, the, till that time, we had had other disasters in, in this whole thing, that, that flying into space is a dangerous business. Well, even today, we... We, even, we don't... Re, we, you know, we've had a couple more, and it's just, absolutely. you know... In fact, even the commercialization uh, that we're promised uh, is coming very, very, very slow. Well, they're blowing up, you know, That's they get right. off the pad, and they're blowing up. So, they're, they're, you know, here again, uh, they're they're going to have to re, you know, do, reinvent everything that we uh, have known for 50-plus years. And uh, so it's just the the way it is, and and, and the margin of error is not there is no margin of error. Uh, you're either perfect or, or you're not going to make it. So space travel is very tough, and uh, we're still you know the price of the uh, Russian rocket went up 
to in the mid seventy millions now. Yeah, and, now that uh, part really uh, bugs me. Hey, yeah. you, part of this book is uh, a good part of the a good part of this book is about inspiring. I want absolutely. We're going to talk about that in the next segment. You got it. Looking forward to that. Oh, we, that's people, awesome! You know, people don't realize. Awesome. You know, they, w- without uh, yeah. without Apollo, there would have been. Um, well, I mean, before before even before Apollo, there right. were, it, w- without Mercury, there wouldn't have been Gemini, there wouldn't have been right. Apollo, right. and and without those uh, Germans deciding they hated the desert, yeah. we might not yeah. be doing what we're doing here. Well, that's right. You know. it, it is an amazing. It's got to be divine intervention. Well, it, it, it's unbelievable, and you stop and think: five thousand years of man's recorded history. What did we do for four or thousand nine hundred those years? We rode horses. And looked up at the sky. That's right. <laughs> so it's just been in our lifetime, Fred, and, 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 and that we've seen a man on the moon in the last 46 years. And really, and we've seen a sunset from the planet Mars. And uh, we have the Hubble telescope that's really kind of shown us what we are all about. Yeah, and so, it even had a, it so even had four, a lens job. <laughs> but for 4,900 years, we looked up and, and, and uh, we rode horses. So it's the last 100 years that we've experienced this thing. So, yeah. Uh, if we if we didn't have Mercury, we wouldn't have Gemini. Without Gemini, we wouldn't have Apollo. Without Apollo, we wouldn't have Shuttle. So it was a building process. Uh, it's because it was about people. People. It wasn't about spending money in space. It was about people here on the ground, inspiring people. And I was inspired in 1969 at the age of 10. I was born in 59, so in 69 I was 10. I was inspired to attach myself to something larger than myself. And this little bookmark you hand out. Absolutely. It talks about be inspired. And I I want to tell the next generation, be prepared. Do your schoolwork. I know everybody says that, but do your schoolwork. At least do your math and your sciences. And and, and, uh, be prepared by doing the right thing by people. In other words, be honest. Be, have some integrity. And then generate a good work ethic. Be ethical in your work and do a good job. Then what will happen, you'll seize an opportunity. It may not be the one that you want right off the bat for a career, but seize every opportunity you can get because you're going to deal with people. And when you deal with people, like I did with thousands of people, it can't help but to rub off on you. I learned from these people. And the more I learned, the more powerful I became in a sense of my own abilities. Now, the thing is, we all have something within ourselves, and it's called a passion. And everybody says, well, what's a passion? That's something to do with love? No. A passion is something you love to do. If it's singing, uh, reading, writing, uh, musical instrument, whatever that is, that you want to develop that. God gives us an ability to develop a passion with inside of us, and it insulates us from the tough times. Now, tough times is a big issue with this uh, generation. They don't want to fail. Whether through the tough times like I did through Challenger, it's a great learning tool. You have to go through the tough times to know what the good times are, and you learn, you come out better. So you're going to go through tough times with health, with job reversals, layoff, that type of thing. But persevere through that, and you will come out on the other side a better person. It's a good lesson. Then look at failure as a learning experience, and then you'll be okay. Now, Diane's going to talk about this. Find and value unconditional love. That's the most important, finding and valuing unconditional love. You know, I think we we both understood unconditional love, but you know, this time together, writing the book, and our children, ha- family, uh, raising our children, it has been just uh, such a blessing okay. to us. Okay, and then and exercise that's right. patience. That's right, patience. And, that's and one of those things. Invest in Ooh. yourself, like <laughs> we did in the book. We're investing in our family, and then be inspirational. Yeah, rub off on other people. That's yeah. right. Uh, Scott Shuttleman Phillips, Diane Phillips, Remove Before Flight. If you hadn't read it, if you hadn't seen the book, uh, there'll probably be at a bookstore near you. They're still touring. Great seeing you guys. Hey, it's good seeing oh, you, good Fred. Seeing you, Fred. We love you, Fred. Yeah. You're a good man. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.